Hi, this is Steve from SewingGold.com, and I'm going to do a lesson slash troubleshooting video on this typical GC6-7-D, which is identical to a machine we used to carry called the Taxo T111-155, which is basically this machine, uh, just with Taxo's name on it. Um, this video is going to be good for also the Conso P1206RB, which is a very similar machine. Um, if you have other machines that look like this, my guess is typical, probably made it or Conso. So, here we go. Um, the first thing I want to do is just make sure that you have a tail. Um, it doesn't have to be this long. It could be as long as you want. As long as you could hold it on the first stitch. Um, I'm going to put my material underneath using the, ta the, uh, the uh, knee lift. I am going to walk this down counterclockwise. Wheels always counterclockwise. Walk it down and just so my thread won't come out of my needle, I'm going to start with my needle down. All right, so I'm going to sew now. Now that I've finished, I want to make sure that my needle's up, but I also want to make sure, which is even more important, so my needle's up, and I would think I'd be able to remove the material without a problem, but there's thread that have from the top has already come around the hook assembly. Okay, I'm using my finger, obviously, to, to demonstrate, but they actually, the, the thread is around the hook assembly right now. So I'll actually show that to you if I can actually see it here. So if you could see the thread right here, hopefully you can see that in the video, the thread is not completely gone around the hook assembly. So if I try and pull this out, that thread may get snagged in the hook. So now what I want to do is, I want to turn the hand wheel into this piece, which we call the take-up lever, is all the way at the top. Okay? So now it's at the top. Hopefully you can see it in the video. Now I'm going to use my knee lift, okay? And then I'm going to usually use my left hand, but since it's going to be in the way of the video, I'm going to nice and take this and it's going to go really smooth. You see how high I got the knee lift? So I'm making the tension here is released because I'm using the knee lift, okay? That's one tip. That take-up lever being up here is very important when you're done, okay? That's one. Number two, if your foot is tight, obviously with your knee it's not going to be super tight, but with the back presser foot lift, it's super tight, okay? Just to get it up, you have to use some strength. Now what I've done, and I've done this to my machine just because it's, sometimes it's easier to get over some material, but also you might not want to always do this, is reduce the pressure on the feet. So this is going to be the outside foot. This is going to be the inside foot. So with the outside foot, there's this little lock nut, a circular lock nut. You could reduce the pressure that way. So counterclockwise reduce, clockwise to tighten. So I've reduced the pressure on the back foot, and then with this middle foot, you have this, there's an actual nut there, which we don't want you doing too much to it, but this is a 12 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna loosen that up. Okay, so I've loosened that up, and then I can also reduce the pressure on that. You don't wanna overdo it because you don't want these things to come out, so not too much. And then after you reduce that, I didn't reduce it much because mine already reduced, we're gonna tighten that back up. So there's no set amount. I can't tell you to do it five times, 10 times, um, just as long as it, hopefully it doesn't come out. Yours are going to be much lower in if you have a new machine. Okay, that is going to help reduce the pressure on the foot. So when you try and lift it here, it's still super tight, especially at the end to get it up. And then to get it down, of course, it's super tight too. And it's sort of hard to get your fingers in there. That's why I always recommend using the knee lift. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to come over to... to um, the uh, reverse lever and the stitch regulator. Okay, so stitch regulator, of course it's not gonna move unless you hit this button, push, okay? So it's sort of difficult um, when you're just doing this and this together, very tight, right? It's really tight, okay? So my hand's in the way a little bit, but this is really tight. If I wanna make it looser, it's sort of difficult to do, but this is what you need to do. You need to hold the reverse lever and then do this at the same time. So sort of do like this, like this, and then this is going to be freed up more. So when I go past the point, so wherever this is, you're just going to maneuver this where it feels like you've freed it up a little bit. And obviously I freed it up here, but now going higher, I would have to actually put it lower to get it to go higher. Because the lower it goes, the higher the stitch. So basically all the way down is my the higher the, st the the highest stitch length okay so now to get it back 
If I move it down, see it's nice and loose up here, but then probably if I went a little farther, it's actually pretty loose and I'm bringing it back up. So this is moving up as I turn this, okay? I can't get it lower, but if I make this bigger, then it goes down even farther, farther, and you can see it move farther and farther. So this way, it's much looser, and I'm going back and forth now. Obviously, it's getting a little looser, okay? But I'm holding the push button here with this finger. A little difficult to do. I mean, you still should be able to do it this way. It's gonna be super tight. It's gonna be tight because this reverse lever is moving every time, oops, sorry, every time I turn this, the reverse lever is moving. So if I'm actually moving the reverse lever at the same time, I'm gonna make it easier to turn. Okay, so this dial gets a lot easier to turn. Okay, so that's the stitch regulator. Um, the next thing in this video is going to be a problem that our customer's having right now. And let me pause it and I'm gonna come back to the needle. All right, before I show you anything with the needle, I want to explain how to put the bobbin case in and how to, how to take it out. So when I put the bobbin case in, I'm always holding the bottom of the bobbin case. This part of the bobbin case is going to face up, okay? So in the video, obviously, I've got this the machine tilted back. I'm just showing you this way so you could actually see the bobbin case. Um, I can get underneath, but I have it on a tripod now. So what I'm going to do is hold the bobbin case. I'm going to put it in, okay? And then making sure the needle's in the up position, and with that take-up lever in the up position, I've got this, and I snap it in. Taking it out, we're holding the clip here, if you could see that holding the clip, so that clip is to take it out, not to put it in. Okay, so I'm taking it out, okay? Same thing again, one more time, holding the bottom of the bobbin case. I mean, you could hold the side too if you really want to. We just don't want the bobbin to slip out, so I could hold it like this too if I really want to. Hold it, put it in, okay? Click in. So with that, the needle in the up position and the take-up lever in the up position, that's gonna be the best position it's gonna be in, okay?